Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville, FantasySixPack.net, and joining me shortly will be Dennis Sosek, also of FantasySixPack.net. This is the new Fantasy Edge for 2021, and uh, we look forward to getting into uh, the waiver picks this week. A um, little bit of an update on the game. I had my cheese here already because I was, I was, I was, I, I, I ate, I ate the cheese already because it was cheese head night because the cheese heads are finally back in force in Lambeau Field and they're currently leading 35 to 17 against the poor Lions. And, uh, but the Lions, they still in the halftime, uh, done a pretty good job of, uh, getting at least some fantasy points, uh, for like TJ Hawkinson and, Goff isn't looking too bad, but they're losing badly, and Aaron Jones has four touchdowns already, so if you own Aaron Jones, I think you won your week. So, but uh, he's using up all his touchdowns in one game. That's not good. I'd like to see it. But anyways, I'd like to bring in the newest co-host of the Fantasy Edge, and that is Dennis Sosik. Dennis, glad to have you aboard, man. Hello, Richard. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, I just want to uh, say that Dennis is the writer of the stock up and stock down. What, Dennis, what what day is that? Uh, what day is that uh, published on on Fantasy Six Pack? Uh, it comes out on Wednesday. So yeah, check Wednesday. out yeah. So check out the stock up, stock down of uh, Dennis. Plus he does all the social media stuff on Fantasy Six Packs and a whole lot of other things. We all have our roles around here. And now he is co-host of the Fantasy Guys. I'm so glad you're along. But before we get into all, yeah, and before we get into all the stuff, let's, uh, let's talk about some of the news, uh, following all the Sunday action. Um, Andy Dalton, um, Bears, uh, Bears head coach Matt Nagy wouldn't commit to Andy Dalton being as a team starter. Dennis, I think we're, you know, I hate to say it, but I think we really want to see Justin Fields out there, don't we? Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, Dalton's believed to have a bone bruise in his knee. Should keep him out at least this week uh, against the Browns, but I think uh, you would think we've uh, seen the future and uh, Justin Fields will be starting this week and probably for the foreseeable future, hopefully. Yeah, and uh, and as for uh, Jarvis Landry, uh, as another guy who came, he's week to week with MCL sprain. Um, I know that a, a lot of people were picking up Donovan Peoples Jones as sort of a fill for OBJ. Does does Donovan Peoples Jones sort of uh, come into the question with if Jarvis Landry is out? Like, well, he I guess he is out week to week. And you're a Cleveland Browns. You're on a little bit more on the Cleveland Browns. Uh, um, you sort of have a line on them a little bit closer because they're, uh, you know, you are from Cleveland, right? Yeah, absolutely. Born and raised. Right. <laughs> Proud of it. So, yeah. Uh, Jarvis Landry, what's the so where are we going with this, and and how does Donovan Peoples Jones fit in? Does he does it, I mean he's uh, we can sort of see, sort of see how Donovan Peoples Jones fits in with replacing OBJ, but but Jarvis Landry, what's what's the deal? Who do who do we pick up for replace him? Yeah, I, I don't see yeah anyone really replacing Landry as far as uh, someone you want to pick up fantasy. I mean Donovan Peoples Jones, you know he, he hasn't done much the first few games after a promising end of the rookie season. Um, and he's, you know, everyone's looking at him, but I don't see him stepping up. I'm hoping that OBJ returns this week. They other got two rookies, Anthony Schwartz and uh, Demetri Filchin, who's, uh, who came in and played well uh, the first two weeks. So I see them as being more of the guys I would go for, but I wouldn't touch any of those guys either because the offense really goes through the running backs and the tight ends, not the receivers. So I, I think I'm staying away from picking up a receiver to replace Landry. Mm-hmm. Move along with uh, some more injury news. Uh, Carson Wentz uh, sprained both ankles in week two against the Rams. Um, he's uh, still undergoing testing to determine the severity. And I think we're, I think uh, his replacement is Jacob Eason, and I think the other guy is on IR. Uh, Eldridge, I believe the name is of the other quarterback for the Colts. You know what, Dennis? I'm not impressed with Wentz, and I think a change might be okay. I don't know how you feel about it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he, how do you sprain both ankles? That's what I want to know. But, uh, yeah, how is when, when is Wentz not hurt? It sounds like he's always hurt with something. And he's always, I mean, his offensive line is supposed to be one of the better offensive lines in the league, and they can't protect him. So I'm not sure what is going on over there. And I, Jacob Houston is not the answer in Indian. I think that hurts their, their offense. I mean, Michael Pittman and Zach Pascal have, have stepped up, uh, in, you know, this season so far, but 
Yeah, Jacob Eason could be uh, the death knell for those two in fantasy wise. Right. And uh, moving right along to a tag Lavoa. Uh, rib injury didn't reveal any major issues, so I guess we're, I guess we're going to see him back in. Um, I, to be honest, to a, uh, I don't know. So far this season, I mean, over, I mean, it's kind of a small sample still with just two games, but, um, yeah, I think, I don't know. I like last year, Tua still, the jury's still out on Tua for me. I don't know how you feel about Tua, but, eh, he's kind of, mm, he's kind of mad as a, as a, as a, as an NFL quarterback so far. Yeah, I don't think I don't think even that Dolphins management sold on Tua. I mean, this is trying to pick up other quarterbacks. They're looking at even bringing in Deshaun Watson in a trade, which may get more steam now with you know, Tua being hurt. Um, Jacoby Brissett's going to be the player, you know, the quarterback there now, and he's he's serviceable, but behind the offensive line, I'm I'm not sure how much he's going to do behind that line either. So uh, that offense going to be take a big hit. Um, and I don't think it's that promising to begin with. Yeah, I mean, as far as backups go, I have to agree. Um, uh, Jacoby Brissett is probably one of the more I wouldn't say the one of the better but I'd say he's one of the more like you say in I'll use your Study. word service yeah yeah, he, yeah. he's kind of works he kind of works as a as a guy somewhat on a lighter note uh Rob Gronkowski Gronk has his 19th two touchdown games that's too short of the tight end record um I have to admit I'm Dennis I'm a little surprised that Rob Gronkowski has come back in a big way and he's almost like he is challenging he is challenging Challenging the top tight ends in the league again after being out of the league for you know a year and and uh, it seems like he's happy being with Brady and uh, when I think they visit the Patriots in Week Four and I think that Gronk is going to get just as much an ovation as Brady <laughs> because he's a yeah. fan oh, favorite. Yeah. So I mean, what's your thoughts on? Been, uh... He's, yeah, he's been back to his dominating self. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of mouth feed in, in there in Tampa. And I've, hey, wondered if, is he, do you think he's a uh, so high now because where he's at is uh, at tight end? You no, get a whole bunch I think he's a, right he's a keep. He's a keep. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell, I wouldn't sell Gronk right now. Gronk is hot. Yeah, he's hot, but that's, you think he's going to stay hot for the rest of the season? Uh, I yeah, I will. I don't think the time is to sell him. Like, I think just, I think get what you can out of him. I know there's, like you say, there's a lot of mouths to feed in, in, on the Buccaneers and, but, but Gronk is getting those, uh, Renzo shots and, well, Brady still loves him. Oh, yeah, I got a little bromance going on those two there. Yeah, they're going to be, I mean, they're dominant. I mean, they, he catches passes that are unbelievable and no one can stop him, but I wonder, you know, he's, like anybody else, I mean, he's one injury away, and he's he's getting he get beats up out there. He, he's a good blocker, so he gets beat up blocking. So if I had him, I if I had a decent tight end as a second tight end, or someone's available, my waiver wire, I think about trading him if I need help at running back or at receiver. If I can get a stud out of it, I right. think about it. Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Fair point. Uh, moving right along with uh, another injury, Deontay Johnson. Now, uh, late in the game against the Raiders, Deontay Johnson uh, caught a pass and he got injured near the sidelines. And and I, I don't know why this is. Deontay Johnson is always scaring his owners. And then he returns to the field. You think like, oh goodness, like, so he always makes injuries look worse than they are. And I guess this was a case that. Another case, but apparently Deontay Johnson, the the injury isn't serious. Touch wood. Don't know. Don't know if he play this week, but he but he's definitely going to be okay. He's avoided a serious setback. Um, so Deontay Johnson owners, you can take another sigh of relief. He's just scaring you again. So uh, I don't know how you feel about Deontay Johnson. You don't own him anywhere? Yeah, I own him in a couple of leagues. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's kind of fragile. I guess he seems like he's always getting hurt, but. I think he's the only receiver in Pittsburgh that I can actually trust because, you know, he gets double digit, double digit targets first two weeks and Big Ben loves him. And I hope he can suit up this week because he plays against the Bengals in a juicy matchup. So I hope he can be out there. I hope he's healthy enough. But yeah, there's a big scare for him. And why is he even playing in a game that they can't win? Why is he even out there? Yeah. I, 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 yeah. There was no chance of the, the, it. was, yeah. There was no, no chance. The, the rally was not there. The rally, yeah, I no mean, chance to win. What's the point? Yeah, exactly. If Get your guys out of there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, finally, uh, Tyra Taylor of the Houston Texans. Um, he could be sideline, sideline for the next four games. I have no idea. I don't know if you know. Do you know who Davis Mills is? I haven't got a clue. I don't know who he is. Jeff Driscoll. Yeah, 
And yeah, Driscoll Magic, there you go. Uh, right. yeah, Davis Mills, I think he's from, I want to say it's uh, Kentucky, but I could be way off. But he is, he's a rookie that had some promise, you know, coming into the, in the draft, but. Um, yeah, he's he played decent against the Browns, uh, uh, you know, on Sunday, but I don't see him being anything special. Um, but I mean, the offense is pretty features any, so it really doesn't matter. Except for Brandon Cooks, they really don't want anybody on that offense. Man. So, no, you know, no, and not even, uh, when we're, when we're talking about the running backs, like for instance, like Mark Ingram, like, no, no, I think he's, yeah, Mark Ingram, he is, uh, He's someone I would want to stay away from. I mean, he had that one game, but he, you know, how many times is uh, Houston going to be in positive game strips and he's going to get 20 plus rushes? Yeah, I think. I mean, uh, you're not going to see that, you know? And they I, got too many. They got Lindsey there. They got David Johnson. Uh, they're going to be sharing carries, sharing the ball too much. And Ingram's like, he's more of the, you know, the guy. He may get some goal line looks, but he'll, he won't get that many rushes. They'll never get that many rushes until they play maybe Jacksonville again in week 14 or whatever that is. Um, I don't see him contributing again that, that well. Yeah, you're right. And uh, when you're talking about uh, positive game scripts, I think the Jacksonville Jaguars are the po- most positive they've got down the road. Uh, maybe <laughs> maybe the Colts, but because uh, the Colts, you know, I don't think the Colts have fielded a very good football team this year. I, I really don't. I, I, I mean, apart from Jonathan Taylor – I mean, and I mean, you've got guys like just Zach Pascal, who's, you know, you don't often see that, right? So, anyways, it's time to move on to moving on up, and uh, moving on up for me, I've got KJ Osborne in Minnesota now. KJ Osborne. Over the past two weeks, he's getting a lot of targets and a lot of looks, mainly because Justin Jefferson and um, Adam Thielen are getting covered so much that it's opening up KJ Osborne and uh, and and Kirk Cousins is finding him. So I I, I really think that uh, this guy's stock is is rising mainly because. Um, because of the other coverage on the on the uh, main receivers of the Vikings. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the Vikings always had two dominant receivers. You know, they had Thielen and Diggs, and now Thielen and Jefferson. But so like he never had a productive wide receiver three. You know, Osborne he had no snaps as a rookie, but I think he's taking advantage of opportunity to play with Cousins during the offseason in camp, mm-hmm. and he's contributing. He's currently the wide receiver 19 in fantasy and should be the one of the most added receivers going into week three. Yeah, he is on the uh, – he's definitely on the waiver list and uh, definitely worth a pickup in the uh, Fantasy Pros uh, waiver list. He is the wi- sixth wide receiver. And, uh, I, yeah, I – I, in in our uh, fantasy six pack league, uh, Osborne was picked up by Joe cleverly before I <laughs> was exam. Well, I I I took too long examining the the stats and everything from from week two. I was so busy with uh, the rest of season, uh, and then as I was going through the, my as I was uh, updating my rest of season, I'm starting to look at this guy. Shit, man, I got to get KJ. And then I realized Joe's picked him up. So Joe's <laughs> a little more. Uh, yeah, our leader of the pack. The fantasy six pack Joe Bond is uh, he's a little more on the ball this year, and he's well, I think he's a little pissed off because last year he didn't have a good season. Now I'm the one not having a good season, so <laughs> I'm off. I'm off to two. I, I start, I'm starting zero and two in the in the F six B league. So I, I don't know. I had a bad draft. I draft. I you know I drafted six, and I I don't know. I I went a little crazy, and I'm uh, paying for it. But uh, I think it's gonna be a rough <laughs> year for me. But <laughs> no, it's not good. No, it's I'm not good. To get in that league. It's never You've there. got to get in that league. You must be. You Are should you be in it. There will be an opening. There's always an opening. Maybe next year you'll be in there. Um, so get Joe to get me in there. <laughs> I will. I will. I will push for you to get in there. You All should right. be in there. I mean, you're a long time uh, fantasy six packer. So yeah, you know. I've been there. Yeah, I've been there for a while. So you've been in there for years, and so you, you should be in that league. But anyways, uh, enough about our uh, problems <laughs> in, in leagues, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> who, who do you got? <laughs> who do you got? Who's your guy who's moving up in stock? Yeah, mine is uh, Vegas Raiders receiver Henry Ruggs. And Ruggs is you know has a high ceiling. He's here on the verge of a breakout season. He's a deep threat wideout uh, who has a passing yards leader in Derek Carr throwing the ball. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, now it seems like the Raiders are more of a pass-oriented offense. Yeah. And he's averaging 22.6 yards per reception. And his 12 targets in his two games put him on a pace for 100-plus targets this season. And the offense is on fire, and I want to get a piece of that. So I, I think Red Ruggs' uh, receiver I want to get at and out my league. So you think the Raiders, like, uh, even guys like Renfro, like, are they – are they st- because when I look at the Raiders, I, I mean, at least from week one – I was just seeing Darren Waller. <laughs> yeah, he was ridiculous. I mean, it, it, it regressed a little bit this week, but, you know, I, I, this is the problem with rugs is that I always, I don't want to, I don't want to rain on the parade, but I, I, I like your, I like the pick of rugs and I like the, and you're absolutely right that there is, uh, definitely the passing is starting to open up. But uh, this thing with Darren Waller is just hogging the targets. I mean, 19 targets in week one. I mean, that's that's a lot. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, that's going to go down. Like you said, it, week two, it went down. You didn't get that many. You got, I think it was, uh, it was only like seven or so. So I think he'll be back to uh, reality and Ruggs, will be, um, Ruggs and Edwards will be the guys that you want to hang on to. Yeah. But uh, definitely a guy move. But uh, Rugs definitely a guy moving on up, and uh, and uh, I, I completely agree. In fact, he's uh, number four on the uh, wide receivers uh, moving on up. Uh, panic right. button, panic button time. Uh, I'll start with you, Dennis. Uh, who have you got in the panic button here this week? Yeah, I'm panicking about Ronald Jones. I mean, even Bruce Arians level starter going to week two. You can't trust Ronald Jones. I mean, he's seen the uh, bulk of the, you know, the backward work going to Leonard Fournette. And after that fumble that Jones had in week one, it seems like he lost his confidence. Mm-hmm. And that running game, very frustrating to deal with. And they wanted him to run when he got Brady throwing you know, nine touchdowns the first two weeks. So I'm, I'm staying away from... Uh, uh, Ronald Jones. Yeah, I have to agree. I think that I think that fumble in Week One, and and you know Brady is actually an on-field offensive coordinator. I mean, like to me, Brady is. Um, well, we I think we kind of know this is that, and this was even in in the later years of uh, of the Patriots is that uh, what Brady says, Brady gets, and when Brady right. and when Brady's on the field and he doesn't see things running right, he, you know, you got to be you got to be on the ball with with Brady. Brady doesn't put up with uh, fumbling yes. at at critical yeah. moments too. I mean, they could have lost the game. That, that yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, I mean, you ever think that? Uh, you know, Brady, when he was with New England, he was always, I don't want to say hated, but disliked, you know. But now he's in Tampa, everyone loves him. It's weird. I mean, it, I feel the same way, which is kind of weird. I mean, I never liked New England, but um, and now he's in Tampa. I kind of like Brady. I mean, he could tell he's maybe he's just changed his attitude a little bit. and He's a little bit more friendly to deal with, but he seemed like kind of a, kind of an a-hole when he was in New England. But now he's a lot better, and he's actually someone you could like out there. Yeah. Um, my panic button is uh, Brandon Ayuk. Now, this has already come up in week one. Uh, Brandon Ayuk is obviously in the doghouse with Kyle Shanahan on the 49ers. And uh, Trent Sherman is uh, getting a lot more work than he is. And, uh, and I know that a lot of people drafted Brandon Ayuk. Uh, he was kind of a mid rounder in in fantasy football, and uh, and again this week, uh, Brandon Ayuk. Uh, he just only had two targets, and he caught one of them for six yards. And it's, I, I don't want to say you have to drop him yet, but uh, boy, Dennis, it's it's not looking good for Brandon Ayuk on the Forty ers Yeah, I don't know what's going on with him. He's he's one of those. I picked him as a sleeper going into the season, and I don't know if he's injured, as you know, Shanahan says he is, or he's just in the doghouse, but. Either way, I think it's uh, you can move on from him now. But uh, you know, you got Debo. That's that's Debo Samuel. That's playing very well. Uh, Trent Sherfield, like you said, is even it passed him on the depth chart. So. I, you know, he's very disappointing, but I think, you know, it's probably time to move on. And maybe he'll catch up later in the year, but maybe when Lance takes over for Jimmy G. But right now, he's not, he's not, he's not doing it for me. Yeah. And, and like you say, like for Trent Sherfield, Trent Sherfield is not, is it, he's a nothing guy and he's passed him on the, yeah. on the depth chart. That's just, that's unreal. Totally I didn't know unreal. who that was until I had to look it up. Yeah. I saw someone catching him out. Who the hell's that? I had no idea who that is. <laughs> so <laughs> it was interesting. I was like, okay. <laughs> Weird. All right, let's take a look at some of the uh, waiver pickups. Uh, now that we're done with the uh, with the people who are, are panicking and, 
But um, I'll start with you, uh, Dennis. Let's let's. Uh, what should we start with? So we'll start with the. I guess we'll start with standard running backs. Who's your right. Who's your uh, Who's a running back you'd like to talk about in uh, in the waivers for for Wednesday? Yeah, I'm looking at uh, Alexander Madison for the Vikings. Mm-hmm. I think Devin Cook is uh, had an ankle injury. Looks like he's dealing with a sprained sprained ankle. And if you were to miss time, I think Madison falls into a priority ad for fantasy managers. Um, he has a he has a week three shootout matchup against Seahawks, who just gave up 200 plus yards to Derrick Henry. So I think you know fantasy managers can get rid of their extra defense or kicker and pick up Madison for this week and maybe for a couple of weeks and, and deal with that because Cooks seems like he always gets hurt. But um, you know, Madison really didn't show that much last year when, when Cook is out, but I think just in volume alone, he should he should give you enough to uh, you know to be a, a priority ad for fantasy owners. Okay, and uh, yeah, I think that uh, if, I mean, we don't know the news and the extent of the injury. I mean, he had a, um, Dalvin Cook kind of had a big day. And I remember after um, J.J. Watt uh, rolled on his ankle, he was the first right there to say he was sorry. Yeah, I saw that. And uh, he, he was right there because uh, he didn't mean it. And a lot of, I mean, the, uh, the people on the... Uh, uh, on Hughes, uh, not uh, pardon me. On the Cardinals were weren't. I mean, uh, pardon me. On the Vikings weren't too thrilled with. But I don't think I don't think JJ uh, Watt meant it because JJ Watt's had a season-ending injury and he didn't he didn't want he didn't want to hurt the guy. Uh, yeah, we know so, that. Yeah. And so, but uh, anyways, uh, yeah. Who do you uh, got at running back? I've got I've got Peyton Barber. I that I want to talk about, and I, I want to tell you people like. Uh, I know Peyton Barber is a guy that that's been talked about on the on the Raiders, but as Dennis said, um, I I just want to warn people about. Uh, I want to talk about Peyton Barber, not not so much in a neg- well, I guess sort of in a negative sense. Like, don't really rush to pick out Peyton Barber. He got <laughs> he got three point two uh, fantasy points. Like, um, he's not. I mean, I know that uh, Josh Jacobs might be slow in coming back, but as Dennis says, the passing game is 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 kind of the thing with the Raiders at the moment, and you're not going to. I think you're pretty much going to get what you get. Like, I mean, like that 3.2 fantasy points. Um, just looking at the uh, actual stats that Peyton Barber got uh, was 13 carries and just 32 yards. I mean, that's uh, do not. I want to just. I want. I just want to emphasize uh, that. Like, um, do not uh, make Peyton Barber one of your priorities for uh, for pickups this week. And I, I don't know, Dennis. I think you probably would agree with that, right? Yeah, I agree. I was kind of surprised when I saw this name uh, listed. Um, yeah, he's he's one of those running backs that doesn't seem to want to go away. I mean, he's not good. Uh, he's not a good running back. I mean, he averaged less than three yards a carry last season. And even if he gets touches with the Raiders, I his production would be less than ideal and not something you want on your fantasy roster. Yeah, he's currently uh, RB8 in the uh, listings of fantasy pros. Um, I'll continue right along with uh, one of the top uh, guys that, and I looked at this on Yahoo and Sleeper, is that a lot of people are putting in bids for Cordero Patterson. And I, and similarly to Peyton Barber, I don't want to advise a people to pick up a guy you're probably going to drop the next week. Cordell Patterson <laughs> has been in the has been in the league a long time, and and I know he's at the top of the list for a lot of people. And I, but I would say that save your fab uh, money on Cordell. Okay, if you want Cordell Patterson, don't spend a lot of money for him uh, because you might end up dropping him the next week. I mean, this yes, he had a good game with Atlanta. Uh, I mean, in a losing cause, obviously, but, uh, and again, against, but I mean, he still had a good game and, uh, and he got a lot of usage, but that might be because of game script or something. So I think when I see Cordero Patterson at the top of the list, I just want to tell people like, don't spend a lot of fab. Yes. Yes. If you want them, pick them up, but don't spend a lot of fab. I, I don't know how you feel about Cordero Patterson, but Dennis, he's, he's, Definitely high on the uh, on the list that people are rushing for, and I can't understand it. Yeah, I can't understand it either. I mean, he's he's a little player that doesn't seem to want to go away. He's always lingering, um, and you know, fantasy that. I mean, you know, he, now he has a dual eligibility with running back and receiver. Yeah, which may I guess I guess that gives you some advantage, I guess. But I mean, how much how much is he going to produce for you on a weekly basis? Definitely not consistent. I mean, if you're lucky to hit uh, when he does produce, like he did 
on Sunday, you know, great, but you know, probably have a better chance of winning the lottery than picking that every week, but um, throughout the year. So I, I think I'm hoping that someone else picks him up. So um, he's not available to me because I'm not going to touch him anyway. So no. it would be to pick him up so that I can pick up my guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, exactly. Stay yeah, stay away from Cordell Patterson. Uh, I know he's, t- uh, I know people are rushing for him, but there's, there's better guys like Rondale Moore or Tim Patrick. I know right now right. he's, he's WR3 in, um, the fantasy pros list and I can't understand that. And this is coming from the experts. Yeah, I don't get that either. No, I mean, I mean, Rondell Moore and, and uh, Patrick are obviously, you know, obviously the must adds at receiver, but yeah, Patterson and Peter Anderson in that group doesn't make sense to me. No, who you no. got to pick up uh, or or discuss in uh, the wide receiver waiver wire here? Yeah, I'm like in uh, someone I mentioned earlier is uh, uh, Zach Pasco for Colts. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's taking advantage of the opportunity with uh, T.Y. Hilton out. Um, he's caught nine of eleven targets over the first two games, and he has three touchdowns. Um, you know, he's, he has he's gold in the red zone, and I think he's uh, someone the fan manager could look at as a not a bad consolation prize if you don't get one of the top targets. Yeah, and uh, actually, I would say uh, pick him up over uh, Patterson. You know, like I mean, well, in, in, in the list, he's uh, WR eight in the uh, in the fantasy pros uh, list here, and I would say that. Um, let me just take a look at the ownership of uh, Zach Pascal is WR uh, WR uh, yeah he's he's only 14% 14% uh, or so uh, owned so uh, yeah uh, yeah I completely agree someone like Zach Pascal I mean he's a guy that uh, you can pick up and, and stash I mean he's, he's kind of a, like you say he's kind of a sleeper guy and we don't know the we don't know the situation with uh, Carson Wentz so, I don't know just so how does that enter into it, Dennis? Uh, Carson. Wilson. Yeah, that, that does scare me a little bit, but I think uh, you know Jacob Eason at least can. Uh, he's done. He's done well enough. I think he can get Pascal. He's a Pascal's a big target, so it'll be nice to have him in the red zone and the uh, you know throw the ball up to him and stuff. So at least he could do that. I think and Jonathan Taylor is running the ball up and down the field. I think they'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, <coughs> finally, uh, the tight ends. <coughs> Uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the 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 quarterbacks jointly, um, but uh, yeah, you've got a quarter. You've got a uh, a guy that I've never actually uh, heard of. I mean, like, um, who's your, this this guy to pick up on on in Pittsburgh? Who is it? Yeah, Pat Farmworth is a rookie. Um, he has five receptions for 60 yards on five targets through the first two weeks compared to Eric Ebron when he has one catch for 19 yards and four targets. That's weird. And I think, yeah, I agree. I think Ebron's dealing with the hamstring issue. So it's kind of being, you know, making him limited, but I think Farmworth is, you know, he, he is, he did well in the preseason. I think it's carried over. And since Big Ben can't throw the ball deep anymore, I think, uh, Farmworth could be someone that, you know, throughout, you know, he could pick up third the season and be a sneaky pickup for the rest of the season at tight end. Right. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go negative again. Uh, all three of my guys are kind of on the negative side for, for people. <laughs> nice. Like, no, don't worry. Next next week, I'll try to be more positive. I'll, I will. But I, I want to talk about Max Williams of Arizona. He had a big day uh, in, uh, and uh, I think again, this is probably positive game script. But uh, but I'm seeing Max Williams at the top of everybody's, like in the transaction treads on YouTube and, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, where is on in uh, Yahoo? Max Williams is uh, TE number six on the on the grab list. So I'm saying, like, temper your expectations with this Max Williams guy. I mean, there are tons and tons of guys on the Arizona Cardinals that are that are to pick up. Like, I mean, we're even talking about Morondale Moore now. And yeah. I think I think this was just a one-off thing with Max Williams. So don't rush out and get Max Williams. Don't you agree, um, uh, Dennis? That, that this is this is not really a guy you should be focusing on on waivers on uh, for Wednesday. I yes, if you got the room and and you and you're needy and maybe you want to try it out. But you know, I just don't see it continuing. No, I agree. I mean, even, you know, Colin Murray's, you know, he's freaking phenomenal. He's back to his MVP form that he had uh, last season before he got hurt. Nearly like you said, there's so much talent in that offense with Rondo Moore now joining DeAndre Hopkins. And I got A.G. Green is there a while. I mean, the offense was a fancy jackpot. But how many touches is Max Williams going to get? 
regularly in that offense. Not much. It was a flash in the pan. And if you're going to pick him up, um, you're going to be He's a good tight end. He's a good player. I like him as a player. He's a great player. But in that offense, though. No, he's not. You're going to be dropping him soon. So, I mean, you could pick him up if you want to try it, but you'll be dropping him in a week or two. So, if you want to take the chance, but I don't see it happening. Yeah, it's like Patterson, right? right. Big day, right. big day, and, and you sort of get, get carried away uh, with yes. the guys. So, speaking uh, of you being negative, uh, which, <laughs> which player are you going to drop? Uh, which player am I going to drop? Well, I have to say it's James Conner of the Cardinals, too. Now we're back, back on the Cardinals. Um, first week. Uh, 16 carries, uh, 53 yards, I think. And then this week, like half that many, like eight carries, and he got 23 yards. I mean, that's just, um, yeah. he's not catching balls. It's like, it's, it's kind of left up to Chase Edmonds. I think you can sort of like, if you need a guy to drop, I think you can phase out, uh, James Conner. I really, I really yeah. think so. Oh, easily. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, he's, he's not productive anymore. And he's, yeah, he's in an offense with, uh, you know, Kyler Murray, who's now basically the goal line back there. I mean, he's going to run, run the ball and not, not a running back. So I think kind of safe to drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. My guy. Yeah. Yeah. Who you got? I picked, uh, Marcus Callaway. Right. Um, you know, he's, was, he was a preseason darling for everyone and he, including you know, he me. That. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, I fell for it. I have to admit. You know, I was like, yeah, I do want to be the guy that didn't pick him and, you know, he starts shining and explodes, you know, for you in the, during the season, but he hasn't done anything. And James Winston, after his, uh, five touchdowns the first week, got back to reality, uh, on the second week. And I don't see that offense being that much. And even how Camara is not, not succeeding in that offense. So, you know what this is the um, case of, Dennis? You know what this is a case of? Is that that? Marquez Callaway wasn't going up against the best, uh, um, coverage. Like, right. like you do in, like in preseason, you're not going up against the best coverage. And, exactly. and, and when you start going up against the good coverage, um, that's, that's when it really shows like your weakness. And this is why I'm more like, I know Juwan Johnson had a bit of a down game last week, but I would rather have a guy like Juwan Johnson, a uh, tight end than I would, uh, Marcus Calloway. Even though, even though Juwan Johnson had a, had a down game and he didn't score a touchdown, it's because of the short passing that, uh, well, I mean, James Winston, uh, I don't know what it is with the Saints. I mean, the first week they just went, they went bonkers on the, on, on Green Bay and Green Bay's defense is just shite. <laughs> yeah, they're horrible. They're and, horrible. It's, they're scary. And, and uh, I'll just be passing the ball a lot. So I sure. would rather have someone like, even, like I say, even though Juwan Johnson had a, had a bad week, I would rather have Juwan Johnson, Marcus Galloway. I completely agree that, uh, I think we, I think we got, I don't know, you, get, you, you get, you know, you, you kind of like when you, it's, it's, it's one of those things, I guess, when you're seeing things in a, in a, in a sense that, uh, I mean, it looks good because Marcus Collier was making these g- glorious catches in preseason. It's just, it sort of, it enamors you to a player. Yeah, it does. I fell for a little bit too, unfortunately, but I got back to reality quick. But I don't know why, but uh, as we're talking, like, like, Juwan Johnson, what do you think of him? Like, I mean, it's, am I, am I kind of, am I on the mark a little bit with it, or, or would you? No, I mean, he's a good player. I, you know, he's, like, he's another you know, preseason darn, but, you know, he caught those two touchdowns. Um, and then you, you know, you said Adam Chapman there who, you know, didn't do anything on Sunday, which is, yeah, I have in one league, he got me exactly zero points, which is really annoying. Um, but I think, you know, Johnson could be, I mean, he's, I guess he's startable and maybe in tight end premium leagues, but other than that, I don't think I would touch him right now until that, I, see if that offense starts to prove at all, because I think people are going to be very skewed by that five, five touchdown performance by Winston in week one. I think the reality is more like what they did in week two, uh-huh. uh, which wasn't much. So that, I think we'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of regression in that offense. I mean, hopefully Kamara can get out of it because he didn't look that good either. So hopefully he can succeed. Okay, so let's look a little bit ahead of the curve and uh, like somebody you want to uh, spec, somebody who's not really on the radar, but maybe will be on the radar later. Uh, who have you got for a spec ad? For... Yeah, I'm looking at uh, 49ers running back Jeff Wilson. And right now he's uh, expected back sometime around midseason after a torn. After suffering a torn meniscus, and last season he was a fancy stud, uh, rushing for 600 yards and nine touch, nine total touchdowns. I know it's a crowded backfield, but it seems like everyone else is getting hurt in that backfield. And when he comes back, I think he he's definitely going to have a role. 
and Shanahan loves him. So that's the one I want to get a, a piece of that rushing offense. I want to get Wilson on my team now while he's – and maybe hopefully you have an IR spot you can stash him on uh-huh. and keep him there until he comes back and then uh, reap the benefits from there. I'm kind of wondering, though, uh, Dennis, because at that uh, 49ers backfield, I mean, we're, we're, we're even run, wondering about uh, – pardon me – we're kind of wondering about uh, because I was yeah, the big push was on for uh, uh, what was his name? I forgot his name already. Uh, the, the guy Elijah who, Mitchell. Elijah Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> a forgettable name. Uh, Elijah Mitchell. So, yeah. um, what did he get? What did he get on the weekend? I'm just looking at the stats here. Elijah Mitchell. We can't remember everything, folks. So we we have to look things up. Elijah Mitchell. I can't even find him. Uh, oh, there he is, Eli Mitchell. They got him as Eli Mitchell. Got oh, six point three fantasy points. Uh, uh, seventeen carries, forty two yards. Um, so putting this into context, yeah, maybe Jeff Wilson when he comes back, he might be a little bit more of a role. So, yeah, I, I, I like the stash. I like the stash. I like I, I like the stash. Yeah, you know, I think it'd be worth it. Yeah, my stash guy is Salvin Ahmed. Now I know that he only got one point seven five. Uh, six carries, 17 yards, uh, you know, uh, three targets, uh, in the passing game. But I mean, he's, he's got a role and I, you know what? I'm really not confident about Miles Gaskin and the, and I really think that, uh, Salvin Ahmed could, uh, take it over. Um, so he's kind of my guy. I don't know how you feel about Salvin Ahmed, but, but I, I feel like he's, he's, he's definitely speculable, a spec guy. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not too, uh, too keen to actually anybody on the doll for right now, but I mean, let the team and carries on Sunday, um, but they were getting blown up by the Bills, so he's more of a garbage time guy. And I think mm-hmm. Gaskin's his job to, to keep, um, I think Ahmed could be left out the way of a wire unless Gaskin gets hurt or something, but uh, I'm not a big fan of Ahmed. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. Yeah, that's- <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we're talking about, I mean, we're talking about guys that are on the outside and we're on the outside looking yeah, at, so, you know, we, we're, we're just throwing names out there, but, uh, um, just to close out the show, we're already at the finish of the show, and um, we're talking about um, just, just let's look at some of the guys uh, near the top of the top of the list. Now we didn't get into the quarterbacks uh, on waivers a little bit, but uh, there really is never much. Um, the um, we've got names like Derek Carr, Teddy Bridgewater, Sam Darnold now in uh, at the top three uh, quarterback. How do you feel about these guys? Are you uh, if you're needing a quarterback, I guess we're I guess when it comes to quarterbacks, we're really at two quarterback lead. I mean, right. but, uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think Carr's, I mean, he's having a phenomenal first two games of the year. He's throwing the ball over the place. He's, uh, I mean, he has a lot more, it seems like he has, the, he's more confident in his weapons now, which is helping, um, that offense, uh, succeed and the out running game is not doing well, uh, with Jacobs being hurt. So I think he's, he's, if he's available, I pick him up along with Bridgewater too. I mean, he won that job and he, he's playing very well. And even, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but even Sam Darnold is actually playing pretty decent, which is something I thought I never would say. But, um, <laughs> somebody I would look at as well. Yep. Yeah, uh, 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 I do think if you need, uh, and even Daniel Jones is good as a second quarterback now. Right. I mean, yeah, with his rush ability. Yeah. I mean, he gives you those, he gives you a floor every, every week that, um, it's hard to beat. You know, he gives you, I mean, when you got like 90 yards and a touchdown, he had that one call back too, because of a holding call. So he could have had two rushing touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, I, with, especially with Barkley not, not up to speed yet. I'm hoping he does get back to speed, but he, um, yeah, they have like no running game right now. So hopefully, uh, um, you know, Jones can succeed even when, uh, Barkley comes back to full speed. Yeah. I doubt these guys are available in a super flex two QB league. Right. True. It'd be very hard to get. Yeah. I mean, the bye week fill ins when they'll start. If there's someone you want to stash now as you get closer to your bye weeks, you know, they start hopping that you want to have a good backup and so you have someone to jump right in and, and your team keeps uh, piling up the points. Uh, just to talk about it, a couple of the other guys that we didn't talk about uh, that are at the top of the uh, Fantasy Pros with J.D. McKissick and Kenneth Gainwell. Well, I got burned by J.D. McKissick by my opponent in the F6P League. <laughs> so he picked him up as a sleeper, <laughs> and he uh, yeah he caught lightning in a bottle there and without touching the side. Yeah, he did. And, um, yeah, I don't know why they're on the bottom. Yeah. And, more. But he's, yeah. He's, that drives he, me nuts. I don't understand that at all. He out-fantasy-pointed. Like right up and down the field. Yeah, yeah. 
and the uh, out fantasy pointed uh, Antonio Gibson too. And RB two is Kenneth Gainwell. I don't. Know, what do you think of Kenneth Gainwell? I mean, I mean, it's a, still it's a committee, um, a committee backfield there in Philadelphia. But Kenneth Gainwell seemed to be quite popular with the uh, people picking up people picking up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. I mean, he has, I mean, Miles Sanders is known to get hurt as well. So I think they're going to be splitting carries as the season wears on. So I, I would love to have, uh, get game well on my roster. He's a good stash as well. He's, right. he's producing. And, uh, we talked about Rondell Moore a little bit, but, uh, finally Tim Patrick, uh, with WR2. Um, he's, uh, for uh, the Fantasy Pros list. Uh, where do you, th- uh, you, you know what? I picked up KJ Hamler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I still feel, still think there's hope for him because he's a good, uh, he's a good downfield threat, but, um, right. yeah, he's a good deep threat. But, uh, the problem is Teddy Bridgewater isn't a deep threat passing no, quarterback. He's not really well deep. Right. But uh, uh, occasionally he does, but I mean, he's still, I mean, he's still KJ Hamler is available. I think, um, I mean, I would say that if you want to pick up anybody new, KJ Hamler is definitely a droppable guy. So, um, but, yeah, I, but too. for Tim Patrick, but Tim Patrick is also kind of a deep guy, isn't he? Yeah, he can be, yeah. I mean, he's, he's a good receiver. I mean, he led, uh, he had last year. He had six touchdowns, and he actually didn't record zero drops last year in all his targets. So he's someone that's dependable and someone that Bridgewater loves. So I think uh, he's someone I would definitely pick up. He's and of course Rondell Moore is number one if he's available in your league. Uh, but he's, he was pretty drafted um, in a lot of my leagues because you know he has that potential. So but Patrick wasn't picked up in many. So I'm looking at Patrick and Rugs, my top two guys, along with Darnell Mooney if he's out there. Mm-hmm. Justin Fields take it over. Yeah, I see some lot of bombs going uh, going out there in uh, Chicago. Mm-hmm. And finally, um, the top tight end um, is uh, Austin Hooper. I, Austin Hooper, he's owned in forty eight percent. So I mean, fifty percent of leagues, he's going to be. I mean, I mean, forty eight percent ownership of Austin Hooper. I mean, he should be owned already, right? Yeah, I agree. I don't see that much. Uh, I mean, they already got, they already have the Joku and uh, Harrison Bryant there at tight end as well. And I, I'm not a big uh, Hooper fan. I mean, I like him, but I, I wouldn't be going on my way to pick him up right now. Mm. Okay, Dennis, that about wraps up the show. I mean, uh, so any final thoughts going into uh, week three? Uh, thoughts of. Uh, of uh, anybody, any of any of any note. No, I appreciate you having me on, and uh, look forward to the season. And hopefully, we can help uh, some fellow fantasy managers win some games. Yeah, uh, me too. And um, I think my final thought, <laughs> my final thought is um, like again, um, don't be afraid to uh, start sleepers um, because um, someone started Dave McKissick against me, and they came up big, came up space. So don't be don't be afraid to pick up sleepers and. Uh, and and, and uh, try them out if you haven't got anybody better in your flex. So we'll right. uh, stick with that. Dennis, great first show, man. And 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 I want to just want to say that uh, uh, check out Dennis's uh, stock up, stock down on Wednesday. That's uh, the day after tomorrow. Or, well, it'll be tomorrow when this is. So uh, check out his uh, stock up, stock down, and don't forget to check out my blurb view on uh, late night on Friday or early morning on Saturday. I post it quite early so that uh, everybody gets a chance to check out the. Uh, you know, you got announcers, and I got I put a whole bunch of stuff in there for people to look at, and uh, so you make sure you check out that and my rest of season, which is on Thursday. So, Dennis, yeah, uh, take care, man. Look forward to uh, doing this again next week. Me too. Can't wait. Yeah, me, Good luck this me week. either. Yeah, you too, man. Take care. Bye bye. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.